Hello everyone, it's Elizabeth from Smart Stitcher. This tutorial takes you through how to create a pattern based on your hand measurements for a pair of gloves that look a little bit like the gloves that we have on the table here. So this is quite a simple design, but it gives you a, uh, the understanding of how to draft a pattern to fit your hand. And then of course, you'll be able to adapt that uh, to create more interesting designs as you go along. So the pattern pieces that we'll be creating will look eventually when we've drawn them out a little bit like this. So we have our trank, we have our thumb piece and we also have our fourchette. Now there are different styles of fourchette. For this particular tutorial we are just focusing on a really nice basic one. We're going to start by looking at our hands and taking some key measurements to help with that particular process. We will then end up with something that looks a little bit like this and that sort of gives us a sort of template for our basic glove pattern and we will also be taking you through how to create your thumb piece and your fourchette. The pattern making method I'm demonstrating here is going to be working with the measurements for the larger hand. Um, you can of course make a pattern for your left and your right and the method that you use would be the same. I'm going to make a pattern to fit my larger hand because then I know it will automatically fit my smaller hand. So on my page I'm just going to make a few measurements. I'm measuring my flat hand and it's resting on the table, it's not pressed down and I am measuring across that sort of widest part. Now the tape measure isn't pulled tight, it's sat comfortably around my hand and I can see that my measurement that I'm gonna be noting down is 21.5 centimeters on my open hand. And then I will do exactly the same. And what I've done with the tape measure is I've actually sort of wrapped it round and under my hand just to give it a bit more stability to stop it from springing open. Um, but if you do have another person nearby, it might be useful to, to borrow them whilst you're doing this particular part. So now I'm going to repeat that sort of measurement, but I'm going to close my hand this time. I'm going to check that the tape measure is across that widest part. And I'm sort of, I suppose I'm squeezing my hand. Again, I want the tape measure sat comfortably round. And I can see that I have actually just gone up a centimetre. So that's now 22 and a half centimetres. So where they overlap, that's what I'm marking it to. Now I'm going to repeat that on my right. And then we're going to have a look at the measurements and see which side we're going to be working with. Now I can see from my measurements here that my right hand when I've closed my fist is actually larger than my left so my right hand closes 23 centimeters my left hand is 22 and a half so my right hand is the one that I'm going to be creating the pattern for if you're more familiar with inches absolutely work in inches I find it easier that because we'll be breaking some of the measurements down into smaller increments I find it easier to work in centimeters but do whichever one you feel comfortable with the next thing to do is then to draw um, a vertical line and a horizontal line to create an axis on your page and you want that axis to be far enough from the edge that you can line your forearm up so that it's parallel with the vertical line and your index finger is on that vertical line and then your thumb has enough room to to go off of the side when we draw around it the key thing is that for this particular part the hand is in position and you've got at least four or five centimeters above that of space to work with so the next thing is to draw in your axis now once you have drawn that in and i've just used a very light fight felt pen to for the camera to pick this up I want to now imagine that I've got a nice straight line that runs down from my middle finger all the way down my forearm. I'm going to do a couple of things now. So I'm going to line up my index finger so that it is parallel with my vertical axis. And I also want to keep that imaginary line um, running through my forearm as well so that things are sort of parallel. I don't want to have my fingers sort of massively too far apart, but just perhaps enough 
that I can get a pencil down in between the gaps. So I've got my index finger parallel and level with my line. I also want to make sure, which is where I've got to shuffle up a little bit, that my horizontal line goes through sort of the middle of my wrist bone. And we're going to be marking some key sort of points on in just a moment, but just take your time to get that lined up. Your hand wants to be relaxed, don't force it down because that'll just make it ache after a while. You want to sort of be nice and relaxed with a little gap in between the fingers, but as far as possible, try and keep the fingers vertical. So the next thing is we're going to draw around our forearm. Now please excuse me for being on an angle, it's because of sort of getting the camera angle right. Using a pencil that you keep vertical, and I'm starting sort of right down somewhere on my forearm, I'm then going to draw around my hand with a vertical pencil. So I'm going in and out and I want to really get down so I know where the base of the fingers is. So you're going down as far as you can. That's a really important point for our pattern. So you're going to work your way around the hand. It doesn't matter if it doesn't look pretty. At this particular point, as long as you're keeping the pencil vertical and you're going all the way around. Now, before we remove our hand, I also just want to mark in the base of where that sort of thumb finishes. So it's somewhere just around here. So I've marked on drawn round, marked on, and then we've marked in our base of our thumb so we can now lift our hand off. I am going to go round this just with a, a fine liner so that um, I, if I'm rubbing things out I don't lose a lot of my key information and then it also helps the camera to pick it up as well. So I have inked in the outline of my hand so I've now got that all nice and set. I've also added some additional lines. So I've drawn a horizontal line that's parallel with my horizontal axis through the mark for the base of my thumb. I've added an extra line which is five centimeters or down from my horizontal axis and that is the where the base of the glove will sit. So I've just drawn a horizontal line there. I've added three additional vertical lines that go through the point where the my fingers finish. I've got three lines here and this is where using um, a clear ruler or a quilter's ruler can be really helpful because I can see my vertical axis but I can also sort of keep an eye on how straight I am. I can see my horizontal axis so I can use all of these reference points to get my line so I know that I am as parallel as I can be to my vertical axis. So I'm just going to repeat that and I've repeated that rather and I have then drawn in my three lines. Now the first of our measurements that I'm going to take is just to sort of get a rough idea of how far down from the end of my finger where my sort of knuckle ends and it's roughly around this is where the lines on your hands can be a little bit helpful. So I know that I am just up from this line and this can, might be helpful to just sort of dab that particular point with a felt tip that you know is going to wash off and then we can measure it. So I know roughly I'm sort of around here and then with my tape measure I can start to line that up and just have a little look. There we are, oh yeah, so make sure I'm at the top and I am about two and a half centimetres down. So if I look, yeah, so two and a half centimetres down. So on my line, I'm going to measure 2.5 centimetres down from where my fingers finish and that's going to be where the, sort of the base of my knuckle is. And I'm going to draw another horizontal line through that point and then we're going to get on with some measurements. Now going to start with our measurements. The first one we're going to do, nice and easy, is with a ruler we are going to measure across the page from just the measuring the base of the finger. So I'm going to use my ruler and I'm just lining it up with the pen mark so I know either side of the finger and then I'm going to make a note of the measurements underneath. 
Now you might ask, but why am I starting with a 10? And sometimes with when you've got rulers that start right from zero, I find I'm not necessarily particularly accurate. So I like to sort of start a little way in so I know I'm exactly on that line and then I'll measure across the base of each finger. So this is just measuring the flat paper pattern. And we're starting to build up some information on this pattern. I have at the top just made a note of the measurement units that I'm using just as a sharp reminder to make sure that I stay on track. I've also just started to add at the bottom of my page a little bit of colour coding so that I know what each of the lay what I've done with each of our sort of measurements. So our first one, which was our green one, we've gone across the base of the fingers and we've measured. Now you might find it useful if they're seeing the the lines is a little tricky is to measure between the vertical lines and that will give you a good indication of that distance as well the next one that we're going to do is the pink line that i've got on my diagram and that is measuring that first joint away from your knuckles now this is where it can help to have a, another body as well just to help get the tape measure in position and i do find it quite useful to sort of almost trap it uh, further down my hand so I want the tape measure to go round and then you want to be able to see it as well so sometimes you've just got to shuffle up so you can see that overlap and you want it to you know a little bit of wiggling you want it to sit around that first knuckle because obviously when we put the glove on you want to make sure that the person is also it's going to fit around the knuckle as well so I can see from mine even though I'm upside down I am looking at around 7.2 by the looks of it for my measurement and I'm going to repeat that across all of those first joints and I'm also going to do this joint for the thumb as well so it's the same thing tape measure around you don't want it to be tight you want it to be sitting comfortably around that joint and then we're going to add in those measurements and put those onto our sheet now. Now each joint has been measured and I have put my measurements onto my sheet. The next thing to do is to measure the length of each finger and your thumb. Now this again might benefit from having another pair of hands if you've got some on standby. If not, you want to have a look so that you are getting the tape measure almost sort of right down into the sort of webbing a little bit more. So it would be easy for me to stop my measurement here but I can actually see just by sort of bending my finger and my thumb a little bit that I get more of a crease there and that is the measurement that I want to sort of try and get my tape measure right into. So I'm going to just sort of pinch that into my hand, keep it as straight as possible and then I am looking to almost sort of go straight across at the end of my thumb uh, as if there was a straight line there and then note the particular measurement on my sheet now today i can see that um, i've shifted the tape measure so again just you know measure a few times make sure that that is nice and as straight as you can get it and we will be sort of tweaking the measurement slightly just to sort of get a, a, as good a fit as we can on our first pattern so that for me is around the 5.8 centimeters so I'm going to be writing that on my sheet. I'm going to, I've actually got it next to my blue line. And then I'm going to repeat that now to get my fingers. So I, sometimes it can help to have your hand on the table and you want to push the tape measure in. Obviously don't hurt yourself, but you want to get it as far down into the webbing as you can, keeping it as straight as possible. And then when you are taking the measurement, you know, imagine that you've got a straight line going across the top of your finger at right angles to your finger there as it were and then you're going to take that particular measurement. You can also of course check it on the sheet as well. I find it handy to just do both and just to sort of keep an eye on how they're looking and mine I can see is seven and a half centimetres so I am going to just write that on my sheet and then I'm going to repeat that for the, my remaining fingers. Once we've done those measurements, we're then going to be taking a measurement where we go across our hand 
and we're going to just measure that with the ruler and I'm also then going to just move up my open and closed measurements so that I have those ready to sort of keep an eye on as we are developing the pattern 23 centimeters so to finish that up I can see that if I go from the widest point of my hand across that I'm looking at about nine centimeters across that measurement we still want to see this mark that we made at the base of our knuckles so keep that there and then we are ready for the next stage right I've just double checked the mouse just to make sure that I was on the right track so my closed hand minus my flat hand gives me a difference of five centimeters now because we have a front and a back to our hands that's going to mean that we have to distribute five centimeters is in effect going to be divided by two so it's two and a half centimeters on the back of the hand and two and a half centimeters on the palm of the hand so I've just written that out slightly longer handed I've then divided uh, the difference the five centimeters by two which means because we've got our left and right we've got two centimeters per side so let's have a look now at how that's going to look as we set up the glove pattern now when we're looking at distributing the difference it might be easy at this point to say well that's fine I'll just add it on to the left and right hand side but I'm just giving you a slightly exaggerated example of why perhaps that might not be such a good idea so I've just traced my fingertips here and what I've done is I've added on just a centimeter to my little finger um, I'm remembering because it's left and right that in effect becomes two centimeters and I've added a centimetre and a half onto my index finger. And I'm hoping that from my sort of diagram here, you can see that it would start to kind of create some fingers that look a little bit out of proportion to the other two fingers. So one of the key things as we start to distribute the difference across the pattern is to avoid um, exaggerating one or two fingers we want that difference to be absorbed across the pattern so that you get a really nice shape to your glove um, and a nice balanced and design that's actually in proportion so that's why we're not going to add it to the left and right having added my 0.65 to my left and right i now need to work out how much i've used and then how much i've still got left to distribute so if I times 0.65 by 4, remembering for the back of the hand, for the palm of the hand, the left and the right, that gives me 2.6. The amount I've got to distribute is 5 centimetres, and if I subtract 2.6 from that, I'm left with 2.4. Now that's across the whole glove. If I divide 2.4 by 2, I get the amount that I would need to add per side. And if I divide that further... I am looking at dividing 1.2 by 2 which will give me 0.6 now why did I say divide by 2 I'm looking at adding the allowance that that excess to my middle and my fourth fingers because they're the ones if we have a look across the top we can see that they're the ones that need a little bit more balance um, to create our pattern piece so my measurement that goes across the knuckle is 2.2 centimetres and if I add 0.6 to that, that gives me 2.8. Same for my fourth finger, 1.9 plus 0.6 gives me 2.5. So now I've got those measurements, I know that I'm going to just add in, add up my 2.2, I'll add in my 0.6 there as well and I'll also do the same to my fifth finger. And then we are going to be creating our uh, new sort of template for our glove. The measurements that we're concerned with to help us move our fingers are the ones that I've ringed on my sheet. So I've added in my allowances and now I am focusing on these numbers. Now what I'm going to be doing is starting from this line with my index finger and I'm going to be measuring 2.8 centimetres across to move my middle finger first, making a mark and then adding a new vertical line. 
I then add my fourth finger because that's the next finger to add from that new line I'll measure 2.5 make a mark draw the vertical line and then for the to add in the fifth finger I'll again from that new mark measure another 2.5 make out that vertical mark there and then draw another vertical line down so we're basically making the template now a little bit wider so now the line for my fourth finger is drawn from that new line for the middle finger and I've now got a new line for my fourth finger as well the last one to draw in is adding that 2.5 centimeters making that mark and finally drawing our outside vertical line. So just to show, that was where my fourth finger finished and then I measured 2.5 for my fifth finger and I've now dropped my final vertical line. The next thing I need to do is in each of the columns for the respective fingers, is I need to draw a line that skims the top of the finger and that goes at 90 degrees to the vertical lines that we've got in position now. So I'm going to be taking my line from vertical line from one side to the new lines that I have created. So that's going to be really important now to ignore the old lines and work with our new verticals to draw in our finger marks. As I'm doing this, I'm also going to be marking the middle of that line as well because that will help us with the next step. On the diagram here, I have now added the lines at right angles that go across the top of the fingers. So you can see that they are just skimming the, the top of the length of each one. And where we've moved the fingers, the lines are in their new places in the new sort of columns that we've drawn. I've also uh, marked the middle of each of those new lines because that has, that's going to be where our new finger drawings will sit because that's the next step that's coming up. I've also added, whilst we're drawing lines and doing a bit of measuring, marks above each of our fingers here that's a centimetre above the end of the finger. And I've also marked the base of the fingers. Now because the lines have moved, that means that our the line for our middle finger and our fourth finger and of course our fifth finger have they've all moved across but we're concerned at this particular point with the new line where our third and our middle and fourth fingers meet and I've moved that a centimetre down and also on the new line where the fourth and fifth fingers meet I've moved the base a centimetre down I've also put it in a ring the other one that I've moved down is the line between the index and middle finger, I've moved that down a centimetre and I've also ringed it because that's going to be useful when we start tracing our pattern fairly shortly. So the next step now is to actually create the shape of our fingers within our sort of new columns and I've got a, a trick or two to help create some nice fingers. In order to help me get the shape of the fingers I have traced each one and I've eyeballed sort of roughly where the middle of that particular finger is. I'm now going to cut out each of these so I've got a sort of a little template to use and I'm going to lean it against my sort of centre mark there and draw in the tip of the finger in those new columns. Now I want to as much as I can follow the shape of the fingertip wherever possible. As I look at my hands I can see that there's sort of bits where they dip in and bits where they curve the other way so I'm really looking now to focus on getting a really good shape to the tip because everything else will sort of taper into the sides and will sort of become the sort of straight finger so I'm actually looking to focus on the tips and create a nice balanced shape on my template. As we look at the fingers, my tracings, when I had them in position, you can just see I've just drawn my red outline around them, so I've roughly matched them up. 
I've drawn around them in pencil, I've drawn around them in red for the purposes of the video, but I just traced the tip in so I got a really nice shape. And I did that with each of them. In order to then create the curves for the finger itself, I find it easier to have it upside down. And then I am working on creating a really nice shape for the tip. Now, as I'm creating the shape for the tip, it then tapers into the vertical lines that we drew for the new width of the fingers. So for each of them, I'm making sure that it tapers in. They don't have to taper at the same spots for you know different fingers or taper in different points. What we want is a really good curve that follows the shape of the finger and then it runs into that straight line. My index finger, I might sort of tweak when I see it on the tracing, but in essence, I want a curve that just follows the shape of that finger and touches the top there where the center mark is. I've also added another line just for the base of the glove. So that on the base of glove line, I've measured out two centimeters and I have just curved the line to create a nice sort of finish for the base of the glove. So once you have your outline created, again, you might wish to go over it with a felt pen or a marker so you know what you're going to be tracing. But the next step is to get your tracing paper ready um, because we're going to be using that to work on our trank pattern next. So this is just to show you what's coming up when we start working with our tracing paper. The first thing we're going to do is to crease the very middle. So we'll bring the short sides together, crease the middle. If you've got a bone folder or your fingernail, just run that along so you've got a nice crease to work with. We're going to be tracing our trank pattern onto the tracing paper. And this is basically what we're going to be taking you through in the next part of the tutorial. Once we have got it onto paper, we are then going to add our thumb placement in. Um, and hopefully as you go along, you'll start to see why we've added some of our other lines as well. So that is what's coming up next. The first view that we're going to trace is going to become the view that is the back of our hand. Now I've creased my tracing paper in the middle and I've also weighted it down so that it's not going to curl up on me. The crease of my tracing paper is lined up with what's now become the very edge of my index finger. So that the crease is absolutely on top of that and completely straight. We are going to be focusing on drawing the outline of the glove shape that we've just created. And there are a few other lines that we're going to transfer as well. The first one we're going to transfer, and I'm going to make this a nice long line, is the base of the glove. So I've got my ruler lined up at the very bottom of the pattern here, and I am just taking a nice straight line, and I'm going across the other side of the tracing paper. So the bit that's blank at the moment is the bits where we're going to put some lines in to get us underway. I might need to just move my pattern weights around so I can get the ruler into position and then I can slide them along again. So I'm then going to transfer the base of the thumb line. That's going to be my next one to take across and I'm going nice and wide across my tracing paper. The next one is going to be where we marked on, on our palm measurement, the base of that first finger. So I'm going to draw that one. And again, I'm just using my ruler, getting it nice and straight and I am going to take that line across. Let me, oh, just need to move up a little bit. There we go. So that's now going to go across my tracing paper. Where I've got straight lines in my pattern, I can also then use my ruler to draw those in. So I'm going to just start off with the line that is on the crease and I can rub out anything I don't want afterwards, but I just want to get this in nice and straight. So I'm then going to start drawing in my pattern line. So I've already drawn in the base and my final straight line here is going to be until my finger or the base of my glove curves. So I can just run a line along there. 
I'm now going to draw in the rest of the curves taking on the new tips of the fingers that we've created and I'm going to go all the way around to the top of the glove so that all of my fingers are included. I'm then going to do some more lines with my points before we move on to the next stage. So I'm just going to draw my fingers in and then we'll come back. So I've got the basic shape of my glove drawn in. What I'm now looking to do is to draw the vertical lines in between the fingers. Now for the back of the hand view we're actually going to move these lines down a centimetre and as you look at your hands, um, the anatomy of your hand and that sort of construction, my sort of I suppose the the webbing section where the fingers join it actually sort of goes back towards the knuckle and then goes down at an angle towards the palm side and we want to reflect that in the glove so where I put in my new mark for the base of the fingers earlier and I drew that with a, a red circle around it that is going to be my start point for that vertical line so I've now drawn in those lines where I've moved the points down by a centimetre and I can have a look at my template. If there's any bits that I'm not kind of happy with I can just start editing and I can rub out any lines or just redo a curve if I'm not happy um, and then we're now going to do the other side of the hand which is going to become the palm view for the trank. So I've now turned the tracing paper over what I've just drawn is on the other side and that's off to the left here. My centre, my lines are matched up again, my crease and my line for my index finger are matched up. The base of the glove, the base of the thumb and the knuckle line are matched up. And we're now going to draw the other side of the glove in. But this time I'm focusing on the line, the original line that for the base of the fingers so I'm not worrying this time about extending them so I can ignore that line those three lines there I need to just mark in those original points um, which I have just transferred over onto my vertical line so I know exactly where they sit so I've now drawn my the other side of the hand on and something I forgot to do when I was drawing out the first side was to mark the centre of the fingers so we'll go back and do that in a short while. With the this side we're now concerned with those centimetre marks we made earlier above the ends of our fingers and that's because when we're stitching the gloves we want to accommodate the sort of the finger pads so we make sure we want to have enough leather there to sew that up. So what I've done is I've traced my fingers in but I've also marked the centimetre points above. Now how this is going to work I'm basically now just going to slide the tracing paper down so that those centimetre marks are lined up and the rest of my, this, the parallel lines of my pattern are lined up and I can see that I'm on my mark there. I'm just going to put a couple of weights on to stop everything from moving and I'm now going to draw in the new tops of the fingers onto this pattern before I take any sort of my weights off and turn it back over again. One final line to put in before you take the weights off and turn the template back over again is the line that extends down from the index finger where we had the knuckle line. So we just want to drop that line down as that's going to help us pop our thumb in. So I've now made sure I've added the centre points to mark all my fingers. I've dropped my line from my index finger because this is where my thumb is going to be going. And I've also, this is the time if you wanted to do rub anything out or just improve any lines, particularly around your fingertips if they haven't traced very evenly. So just put the curves back in and then we're going to get on and put the thumb line, put the thumb placement in. From other patterns I've looked at and other glove um, templates I've seen, I know that this shape is probably like a teardrop or an, or an oval shape. And that's what we're going to add to your pattern now.
I know from having a look at the sort of the anatomy of my thumb that it is quite wide it's quite squidgy I've got larger hands for a lady so I want to just sort of measure very roughly just to get a side so I'm almost if I go from sort of fleshy parts sort of towards the back of my hand I'm probably looking at sort of somewhere in the region of about four and a half centimeters or so so I know at its widest point my oval or teardrop shape is going to be around the four and a half centimeter mark or so so I'm going to just go back to my tracing in a moment and I'm going to start roughing out a shape so I've roughed out my shape and I'm now going to refine it just a little bit more to make it a bit more balanced. You can, of course, if you're really happy with one side, um, trace onto another piece of tracing paper, put that underneath to create that mirror image so that you can then just trace that on again. Um, I am just going to sort of eyeball it and create a nice shape that I'm happy with. So I've drawn in my outline that I'm happy with. And this might be something, so the actual thumb placement might be something you move as you develop your patterns based on the anatomy of your hands and how the glove feels once you've actually sewn it and put it together. So on here, I've drawn in my line. I've gone a little bit below the base of my thumb line because I know that I've got quite a lot of sort of flesh there and I want that to sort of feel nice and encased. I've also then just sort of smoothed out and I've measured and I am just over four and a half centimetres, almost sort of four and three quarters. So I know that I've got enough width across there. We're now going to put in the sort of final part of our thumb placement so that the glove can be stitched on effectively. So the shape that we're about to draw in is going to sort of look like a little diamond at the top of our sort of teardrop shape. I'm going to be using the measurements at the base of my thumb here because this links to this to help me and to sort of help me create that diamond shape. Now that measurement across my thumb is 2.5 centimetres and that's what I'm going to use to create the lines for our particular shape here. So with my tape measure, because I want it to have a little bit of flexibility, I want to walk along and I'm going to have the the sort of the numbers of the tape measure on the outside but I'm going to put the tape measure so that I can follow the shape of the curve and when I get to the 2.5 line so I'm going to have to sort of bend over a little bit to, to look at it I might just use a finger to help me I'm going to then make a mark and that's going to be the first part of our line I'm then going to keep it to the outside again because I sort of don't want to sort of turn it inwards and reduce the size. Knowing that I'm 2.5, looking to keep the tape measure as upright as possible and I want to keep it as straight as possible. And if you've got a little, mine's got a little kink at the start, so I'm just going to move along so that I'm not at the very, very start because it's got a kind of a weird shape. And I want to get that line right. So now I'm measuring 2.5 centimetres across and I want my 2.5 centimetres to finish on the line. So I've got to just adjust my tape measure until I hit that angle and I can see that I am there. Oh, so this is where, again, an extra pair of hands might be helpful. But I'm just going to hold the tape measure at that particular point and make a mark. And... Again, this is where your, if you've got a clear ruler, it can be helpful because we can balance up the mark on the first mark we made with the new, the other side because they're going to be symmetrical. So that I can then say, okay, that mark will go there, so that mark will go there. So what I'm going to do now is join those marks with a ruler. So I've got a nice straight line. And that's going to join up like so. Now when it comes to actually using our glove placement, we're not actually doing anything with this line here or that line that we took down from the index finger. So this is where our glove placement will now sit. In terms of our drafting, our trank pattern is now largely complete. 
you can tweak the fingers and if you want to sort of just work on the curves at the fingertips a little bit more I can see this one looks a bit odd here so I might just revisit that I'm then going to turn the tracing paper over and we're going to glue the back onto card so I've sprayed the back of my template with glue if you are using an aerosol glue or any type of glue please make sure you follow the manufacturer's instructions for safe use I'm now going to turn that over and I am going to position my tracing onto my card. Now you want to ideally work from the centre out. Um, air bubbles we can work with if there's a diagonal line or if the tracing paper has dragged at all then we don't want that to happen. So just smooth out onto your card. There we go. If it helps and you're worried about getting it lined up, you can always fold the card in half and line up the crease in the tracing paper with the crease in the card. Otherwise, you're then going to make sure it's nice and firmly down. Once this is glued on, we are then going to cut everything out, but we're not cutting down the fingers. We are only cutting down the around the outside and we're cutting the thumb out. If I can show you this one. The fingers remain the same. We're not cutting down those at this particular point. We will be piercing some holes so that we know where to cut to. We'll also be cutting out the thumb. Um, and as you can see, that is then going to become our right hand. If we turn it over, we get our left. Once your trunk has been cut out, it's going to be looking a little bit like the one we have on the table now. The view that we've got with your thumb hole on the left and the plain hand on the right will become the right hand and if we turn it over it reverses and becomes the left hand. So very important when you come to actually cutting out your leather that you need to remember to reverse it otherwise you'll be cutting out two hands that are the same. Next it's onto the thumb and the fourchette pieces.